everyone. Thanks for joining us at Game Trade Media for painting happy little minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. Hashtag is... Who can guess what it's going to be for the Stormcrow mercenaries and the Stormcrow archers? Wait for it. Wait for it. Hashtag Stormcrow. And you're like, that sure is the compliment for me. <laughs> yep. That's what I needed to hear today. Thank you very much. Uh, model. <laughs> that's... I don't know what that is. Another reason to go to Australia. Tweak or the I, week was, after. I was just prepared. I was like, goodbye, Dave. <laughs> Go. right. Gone forever. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. And I'm Dave. And welcome back. It is 2020. My goodness. New year, new minis, new paint. Such amazing hindsight. <laughs> uh, so what fantastic. are we painting today? We are painting uh, WizKids uh, pre-primed uh, minis. I think we've got some from the Knowles' Marvelous Miniatures yes. range. Uh, you are going to be painting I'm the... I'm going to paint the Big Eagle because it's majestic and it reminds me of Lord of the Rings. Okay, cool. <laughs> I like that. Excellent. And I'm going to be painting the death of 19, uh, 2019. 1919. <laughs> well, that oh, died too. I'm okay. so old. <laughs> it have, did die have you too, lived <laughs> so long that you've just forgotten which decade? Which, it, just they which, all merge together? They have. Over the course of many, <laughs> many, many, many decades. Over the course of 100 years, yes, things they have. just tend to they get have. a little. Well, I've shown you that picture, up. haven't I? The, the picture of me. Yeah. No. That is, it was taken in 1937. No, you haven't. Yeah, it looks just like me. Hmm? Not with the hat or the glasses. <laughs> like but if I took the hat and the glasses off, this in exact 1937. Yes, this, this exact t shirt. Yeah, crazy. Um, but I'll show you it later. Is it just like a selfie with sepia tone over top? No, no, it's not actually. <laughs> a friend of mine found it in a, uh, it's on a hotel wall in uh, Arkansas. That makes the story 10 times better. You should have led with that. No. like this. That's the I was in a line. hotel. That's the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else found it for me. No, the but yes, you're old. We're, uh... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, cool. Welcome hey. back, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, Welcome back, back. everyone. Uh, so good to be here. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> hey, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we're going to be um, picking up some WizKids models. Uh, we're going to be having some fun. We're going to be talking about yes. what we did over the uh, the break. Over break, yeah. Over break. Feels like we're back from school almost. Like we like back to school. Back to school. Yeah, sure. That. <laughs> I've forgotten. It was so long ago. I'm old. Remember. <laughs> Uh, but yes, we're going to talk about that. Um, we'll run through. We'll have a look at some uh, minis that people have posted up over Ooh. the over the break as well. Yeah, we haven't done that in a while. And we've we are, been gone, obviously. Obviously, but <laughs> yes. Uh, and oh yeah, actually in the. The week before we were at, uh, well, you were at um, PAX. I was at PAX. Yep. I was at PAX. We, we did we did some painting there at PAX, though. It was, yeah. it was fun. And uh, also today we're going to be giving away these awesome cloud giants. Ooh. Both cloud giants. Uh, so we're going to give those away. Um, and surprise, surprise, the hashtag, hashtag. is... Hashtag? Cloud giant. <laughs> Because obviously we're not back in the swing of things just yet. I, I mean, I there. could come up with a few very interesting. I think hashtag fifi fo fum. The... That could work. <laughs> that could work. Should hashtag we try that? beanstalk. Hashtag beanstalk. That could be good. Hashtag Knowles's marvelous miniatures cloud giant, pre primed. I the don't. longer the hashtag, the more dedication. <laughs> the more dedication it shows. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Excellent. I think we, you should totally, um, uh, we should totally do that. We should totally. It lets me know that people really, really, truly do want the giveaway. <laughs> with the, everything in their heart and soul. <laughs> hey, Dave. <sighs> cool. So, hashtag cloud giant. If you only kind of want it. 
If you only kind of <laughs> want it, yeah. If you really, 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 really want it, then... Go all the way. That will not affect our decision at all. <laughs> but... <laughs> Nice. But I'll be very amused. Um, yeah, so how was, how was your break? Mine? Mine yeah. was fantastic. I went uh, to foreign lands. You, well, not, they're not foreign to you. Well, this is true. But I went to another country. You went back to your, you went back to your place of being. You my, went my back to where land. you hatched. Yes, I did go back to where I, where I was hatched <laughs> thousands of years ago. <laughs> is that why everything's on fire? Uh, yes, yes. It all spontaneously combusted when I arrived. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I spent uh, two weeks in Australia, which was fantastic. Um, it, was, it had been three years since I was last there. Um, to my wife and my daughters, and we had a wonderful, uh, wonderful Christmas period. Spent a lot of time with my parents, which was great. Uh, and yeah, caught up with a lot of friends, went to the beach quite a lot. That's nice. Um, I had a very good time. It's summer there, right? It totally is summer. Yep. It's uh, it's quite warm. That's. I feel like that's cheating. It's a like <laughs> you you literally like you went on a migration and you skipped all of the. I doubled up on summers. Yeah, you doubled up. Yep. I did. But uh, yeah, you have to go a long way to do it though. <laughs> As we were discussing earlier, door to door to get there. <laughs> From my place to my parents' place was 33 hours. So that's why you can't, that's real, why you really have to go for at least two weeks. <laughs> so it takes a while to readjust. Jeff says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Jeff. Happy New Year, Jeff. Dave says, He hopes it wasn't on fire for you. Um, my parents' place wasn't on fire, but much of the country is. Um, so. Um, it's, it's quite tragic. Um, there are a lot of Australians doing it really tough at the moment. So, uh, I'll, I'll definitely go out to them. I think uh, it was one of the things that, uh, that a lot of folks might not know in Australia, the, um, the Rural Fire Service, uh, who are fighting a lot of the fires, are volunteers. Oh. And uh, a lot of them have been out there fighting the fires for like eight or nine weeks now. So, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty brutal stuff. But uh, yeah, apart from that though. <laughs> apart from that. Uh, it was sunny, uh, there was quite a lot of smoke haze around, uh, but we tried not to let that stop us. We got out, saw a lot of things. As I said, went to the beach quite a few times. And... Uh, Overall had a good time? Everyone had a good time. I, I got to stop and uh, have some of my favorite fast food, which is Oporto. I don't know what that Portuguese, is. Uh, Portuguese chicken, um, basically Portuguese chicken burgers. That sounds really good. Yeah. You just good. made me really hungry. <laughs> so a, a really cool uh, sort of spicy chili sauce. Oh, that sounds really, really that good. The chicken's marinated in, and then it's uh, like flat pressed. So the Chicken breast it like that thin uh, on a great bun. But yeah, when I lived there, it was uh, my staple. When I say it was my staple, I ate, like, ate there like five, six times a week. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. I didn't go anywhere. No, you for, stayed. Home? Yeah, I stayed. Well, I stayed oh, in stayed America. In your, yeah. In, you stayed in your new, <laughs> in your new house. I stayed in my new house, and it was delightful. I decorated, and I invited cool. everyone, uh, like my family, over, and I made cinnamon rolls, and awesome. uh, we did we did Christmas at our place. Oh, excellent! Which I feel like was super fun, um, and it was a good time. Uh, yeah. Don't really have much. Else to <laughs> say. It, it was Christmas. It was it was a fun time. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> I made cinnamon rolls and they were really good. Nice. Uh, my boyfriend got me a heated blanket and it has a preheating option. Yeah. Um, which makes it sound like I'm like it's an oven. <laughs> You're about to be baked. Yeah. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. So I've been entertaining myself with that because he also, unrelated to Christmas, bought a stopper for our um, our tub. Right. didn't have one and 
I, I got bubble baths, and so I was like, oh, now now I am brining if right. I get salt <laughs> while the blankets are preheating. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> like a turkey. Right. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. I've been amusing So myself. you were roasted. Yeah. I, boiled. Boiled. I guess would be right. what. Boiled <laughs> okay. and baked. Boiled and baked. Okay. <laughs> um, nice. As you do, yeah. I guess. That's good. It was, it was a fun. It was a fun Christmas. Fun time. Cool. Uh, I'm excited for my trip out of the country, which won't take nearly as long as 33 hours. No, hopefully not. Hopefully, uh, no <laughs> trips anywhere take any near that long. Uh, we're gonna go. I was telling you earlier. We're gonna go yep. to Ireland in March. March. In cool. March. Yes. Yeah, surprisingly, um, and kind of coinkidink like over the uh, week of St. Patrick's Day, even though they don't do anything. No. Like America does for St. Patrick's Day. I thought, I got a little chuckle out of it. Right. I was like, yep. oh, happenstance. Um, You'll have to take the, take back to them their, their traditions. <laughs> what do you Excuse mean you guys me. don't drink green beer? Uh, we're not nearly having as much as a party as I was informed. Yes. Okay, uh, so. Where's all the corned beef? Oh, Nobody yeah. eats corned mm. beef, that's terrible. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I don't eat corned beef. Um, but yeah, so I'm super excited about that. Um, we're gonna go up and it's gonna be a whole week of uh, horseback riding and swordsmanship and swordsmanship awesome. on horseback. Oh, and mounted cool. combat. Mounted yeah. combat? Awesome. That'll be very cool. So, it's gonna be a fun time. That'd be awesome. I'm just popping open the, uh... The griffin? The griffin here. Just because I know that there'll be times when I need to let the, uh, what do you call him? Grim Reaper. The ghost of 2019. I got it right. Yes. Can you give him some like YOLO 2019 glasses or something? Like. No. Uh, <laughs> well, all right then. That's just not possible. It's not possible. I'll get you a pair of pliers and a paper can you, clip. Can you paint some 2020 glasses onto them? <laughs> right on to him. You'll give it a go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, that's cool. I think um, yeah, I'm a big fan of Ireland. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I've never been, so I'm I'm excited, especially yeah. under the uh, circumstances. You'll have right. a. It's going to be a really time. fun time, yeah. Definitely. Now we just have to find out where in Ireland <laughs> it is, right? You know, I just got to find out where in Ireland <laughs> I'm going. I, I don't know where I'm going. I just was like, oh yeah, I definitely I want to ride horses and sword fight, and yeah, I wouldn't have yeah. <laughs> totally down. <laughs> I never know where I'm going. Even whenever Game Trade Media sends me places, I don't know where I'm going. Right. Leona tells me, then I forget. <laughs> <laughs> and then I show up and I'm like, where, where is this place? <laughs> um, you hop in a car and somebody drives and yeah, you hop out. Yeah, but it's the, right it's the right place. place. Yeah, it's always the right place. Leona wouldn't let me go. Leona is like the best at herding cats I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Leona could nail jello to a tree. Uh, there you go, they got it. Put that on your resume. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Able to nail jello to a tree. That's cool. Uh, yeah, so like I, I show up and I, I trust that neither Leona nor Johnny would let me stray far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gretchen, here's the coffee. Here's the coffee. <laughs> it's over here. It's over here. There's. Every hotel we've been in has had an attached Starbucks, so I'm obviously not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, that's the plan. That's the first thing Leonir asks. Uh, Hello, do you have an attached Starbucks? Uh, that's cool. Ah, uh, Cliff, where are you sword fighting? Hema Fencer here wants to know. Like, where am I sword fighting in Ireland? Because that's the whole joke of me not knowing where I'm going. Uh, but, it, or where it, do I sword fight in general? It may sound like a bit, but it's not. <laughs> it's the truth. She doesn't actually know. So much of everything that sounds like a bit between the two of us isn't actually a bit. Just, <laughs> if you ever wanted to be very concerned about both Dave and I's welfare. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm going to go up with Jack Gassman, um, and we're going to be sword fighting over there with their crew. Uh, so. Yep. I, I think it'd be very cool. <laughs> but otherwise you... Uh, wear a kilt? A kilt? No, I'm not gonna wear a kilt. I'm gonna wear riding breeches. <laughs> and, 
<laughs> or I'm gonna insult everyone's fancies and wear blue jeans, because apparently that's not a thing. Like, that's a very American horseback riding thing, and okay. I didn't know that until I started hanging out with more, like, European people who rode horses, and they're like, what do you mean you wear blue jeans when you ride? And I was like, what? Wait, what, what? No. Of course. I wear blue jeans when I ride. <laughs> I didn't realize that wasn't a thing either. It's apparently not a thing. And I don't know if it's just English writing versus Western writing. Right, okay. Like, because that's what be. I grew up with. And I know, like, in English writing, they have, like, breeches and stuff that you wear. And right. um, I'll probably get myself a pair just because it's an excellent excuse to get more riding gear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, normally you, um, you do your sword fighting around D.C., yeah, no, that, no, no, no. Uh, normally, um, there's a few different groups um, for historical Europe European martial arts on yeah. the East Coast. And um, I run with the MKDF. Oh, as I, I can hold on. To this. <laughs> uh, you're distracting me with swords. Uh, but I run with the MKDF crowd. Um, so MKDF. MKD Maryland Kunstdefekten. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so they study Lichtenauer, which is the German uh stuff and it's uh they're pretty easy to find they're in columbia maryland okay uh cool. there's a few others uh and groups in maryland though i think there's two different two other groups in maryland besides us okay radio um but we're, we're the og oh okay yeah super important <laughs> um but there's also groups in virginia like near arlington there's right. yep. um ckdf which is there and um, a whole bunch of it. It's growing. It's been growing. Right. Like the five years that I've been doing it, it's been, it continues to grow more and more and more. And okay. it's, uh, I think it's interesting that it's doing it. I think it's fun. I think everyone should learn how to sword fight. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> but some, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's cool to see that it get, keeps getting picked up more. Yeah. No, that's good. Definitely good. I think with Game of Thrones, it just like became cool again to be interested in that kind of stuff. Right. And so uh, people were less like they were like, yeah, let's go be nerds. Right. Um, except like nerds that actually have historical references. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go be historical nerds, historical but not reenactors. I okay. I don't know. Um, I hang out with reenactors. There's too, a fine so. a fine line between everything, really, isn't there? Uh, there is. I consider the, uh, like SCA and HEMA and reenact. Like I consider it all like cousins. cousins like it's okay, all different yeah, yeah. parts of the same family. Like some sure. focus more on history and costuming, and some focus more on the sword play, and some do you know knit, do bits and pieces. Right. But at the end of the day, we're all we're all kind of part of the same big family. Sure. Having fun with history. We're having fun with history. That's a good way to put it. I like it. Cool. Some That's HEMA good. person out there is going <laughs> to, they're going to hear that, no, we're not having fun with history. <laughs> we're using history to beat people over the head. Um, but we are. Which is when they start to intersect with the history teacher group. <laughs> Some, yeah. I do know people who are invested in HEMA who actually are professors as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Which is very funny to me, because how fun would that be to like, be in your little <laughs> history class and you're like, no. Learning about history. That's my my. That's that's your uh, student voice. Excited student <laughs> voice. <laughs> so that's what all. That's how you tell your students are excited. Oh, okay. They, right. they have that voice, you know. <laughs> and like your teachers, like yeah, and this is what I do for for funsies and stuff. How yep. like how cool would that be? That would have been very cool if my history teacher had him. Doing that kind like of thing. I never taught history, but when my kids, when I taught, would find out about it, they were, they thought it was the coolest thing ever, and they were also in elementary school, I guess. So. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So who, who asked about swords? Was that Cliff? Who asked? It was Cliff. Yes. Cliff? What does Cliff do? His. Yeah, Cliff. Where do you sword fight? <laughs> Is it on the? Yeah, it's in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cliff. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, wait. No, okay. No. I know a Cliff that has, that his second name starts with a BR. 
Ah. Yeah. So for a second there, it was like, hang on. I know there's a few HEMA people that actually watch the show because they came up to me at the last tournament and they were like, you know Dave? I know Dave. <laughs> and I was like, I. Yep. I do know Dave. So it was Mackenzie yeah. and Kevin. Yep. And you're just like mm -hmm. naming them off. You're like, these are all my swords friends. I know a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know a lot. I have a whole small army. I have like three, uh, I know like three of them. Uh, Four, maybe. <laughs> yeah, Cliff is with uh, SCA and HEMA, and they're both fun groups. They're good groups. Cool. They do their own things. Um, Excellent. I oh. think they each teach very different things that both need to be taught when it comes to swords things. Right. Cool. Well, what did what did everybody else get up to over the break? How many how many minis did everybody paint? Um, I obviously painted tons. Tons. Yeah. That's what Stockings I, that's what I thought. Worth, I, yeah. don't, I noticed that there were a whole whole like <laughs> uh, wheelbarrow fulls. Yeah. Of painted miniatures outside. Did that wow, wheelbarrow fulls. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely. how many you painted, right? That's how many I painted <laughs> on the mark. Awesome. I didn't paint any. That's because I painted them all for you. I was. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was like, you know what? Someone has to carry the team. Yep. It's ball waves away. <laughs> yeah, I didn't paint a single mini. I did, however, oh. uh, visit the visit a few places in uh, in my hometown of Newcastle. Oh. I visited the very first store where I became uh, aware of tabletop wargaming. Oh, so you you like went, but you were like blast to the past. Yep, indeed. How was that? Was that fun? That was very cool. Uh, it was great to sort of pop back in there and check that out. Uh, that particular store was um, they'd reduced the size of it, so it was Aww. about half the size it used to be, and they didn't have any wargaming stuff in there. Oh, that's that's the story well, got sad now. Well, wait, no, Make it, it happy. Okay, it gets better. It gets. It, it gets happy again. Uh, it's because the um, the owner uh, actually opened a second store, second location, uh, that is kind of twice the size. Um, I think it's almost twice the size of the uh, the original store. So this small one would be a quarter of the size of the All second right. store. That uh, has a lot of wargaming stuff, but uh, it's a big hobby store, so it has a lot of um, model kits. Uh, RC cars, it's got uh, trains, all sorts of uh, cool hobby stuff. Um, and we visited that one on Boxing Day, which for folks who don't know I didn't know what that was until this Christmas. <laughs> right, really? Yeah. <laughs> Someone's like, Boxing Day. I'm like, are Boxing people Day. fighting? Like, is, there, <laughs> yes. is there like a Christmas fight event I don't know about? It is, there is, yeah. 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 Uh, it's just like um, uh, Black Friday here. Oh, okay. But uh, no, uh, so Boxing Day, so the day after Christmas, um, normally in Australia, most stores are closed on the day after Christmas, but my daughters wanted to pick up some more um, Lego from this particular uh, store. So we went and visited it, and there were a ton of people in the store. Oh. There were probably like 40 or 50 people in the store. Wow. Um, which just amazed me. It was cool to see people walking around with like, Big armloads full of model kits and we, having fun. We used to have, I think, a gamers workshop. I want to say it was games workshop. Uh, yeah, games workshop uh, okay. where I grew up. Um, that was really popular with a lot of people, and the whole entire front was glass. Oh yeah. So yep. all the all the guys painting could like watch people go by. Yep. Um, and that was a really fun shop. And then sadly, it left the. It left the left avenue. The, left the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, no. Ooh. Now there's no more nerdy hangout spaces. Yeah, that's a shame. Well, they replaced yeah. it with a really delicious ramen shop. So <laughs> <I'm> like, <"Hey!" laughs> nerdy hangout or ramen. That's true. Um, yeah, I also got to visit the, uh, the the Games Workshop store that I first worked in. Oh, wow. Back in uh, 1994. Wow. Okay. So it was kind of uh, kind of funny to walk in there, and the staff member was very very much sort of on his game, and like, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Have you seen this stuff before? 
<laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I have actually. Um, to be honest, I, I used to work here. You used to work in this store back in the day. And I was just waiting for him to ask me like when back in the day was. So I could say, before you were born. <laughs> Carl says, I painted three minis for a secret Santa exchange. That's about all I got done. We should oh, do cool. that next year. We should. We should do secret Santa. Well, it's going to be a little bit tough. In the group. Oh, in the group. Okay, y'all yeah. thought you just meant between me and I. <laughs> <laughs> we should do Secret Santa. It's fine. It's good. I'm in the group, who silly. Who could be this pink X-Wing? I wonder who it could be. Uh, definitely not me. <laughs> Why is there so much glitter? <laughs> <laughs> it's just an X-Wing that's been coated in glue and dipped Dip into in a vat of hot pink glitter. <laughs> that's your Secret Santa. That'd be fantastic. Um, I'm looking forward to it. But no, we should we should uh, do it in the group. Yep, definitely. We could do a little sign up and we'll line could... some people up to uh, to help us coordinate that. Yeah, that I like, like that an awesome idea. idea. So who who did that? Was that uh, Carl? Yeah. Excellent. Carl. Good work. Good work, Carl. I did paint over Christmas, not yeah. minis, but I did paint. Oh, you painted walls? Uh, no, I, I painted with watercolors. Oh, cool. um, I also saw cats. Mm. <laughs> I don't know if we have. I don't know if we have time in the rest of the show time for to me to ask all that. the questions. <laughs> I saw the unpatched version of cats. Oh I have so many questions. <laughs> oh, you saw the first wow. I did. I did. I saw it before they tried to fix it. They can't. I'm gonna tell you right now. It's I don't like, know. I don't possible. know what got downloaded. <laughs> I have no idea what got downloaded, but it cannot possibly in three days' time has had fixed it. Any, everything that I real experienced. Issues. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> it was, that's really what it was. It was an experience. An experience, right. Which cats, to begin with, should only be seen as an experience. Sure. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with cats in general. I'm, I'm aware of it. Um, so. We have a cat. Well, good, that's all you need to know. <laughs> okay, great. It's the same. So if, uh, if an actual cat did put on a musical. Yep. I think they would come up with cats. Okay, radio. Yeah, because like everyone's like, there's no plot. There is a plot. It's just vague. Right. Because it's cats telling you about it, and the cats don't think you really need to know. <laughs> it's not important. <laughs> it's not important. Listen to them sing about themselves. Um, so there is right. a there is a small plot. You just have to actually you have to squint for it. Squint to see it, right? Um, okay. And in the original Cats production, it's. You know, it has its tiny little plot, which is vague and um, aloof, like cats ought to be. Right. And then it's all the costuming and dancing. Right. Um, and so it's it's really fun in that regard. Um, in the movie, um, the <laughs> <laughs> so like I feel. I feel like we were good costuming and good cinemato like cinematography away, like just a no. little bit away from having this be this huge niche like event okay. that would have gotten really big. But because we did not, right? It was just it was just such an experience. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, that's what I'll say about that. Okay. Uh, a lot of people said it was too sexy. It's not. Those people are weak. They won't survive the winter. <laughs> it's not. It's about as sexy as an eighth grade dance. Okay. It's as sexy as an eighth grade dance. It's definitely in the air, but no one's actually gonna gonna get anywhere. Right. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> that's a really interesting description. <laughs> um, the only like. Part that I was like, kind of, that kind of activated my fight or flight response. Yep. Actually, I'll say oh, there's two. There's two parts that made me be like, oh no. The opening credits oh, and no. the closing credits. No. Yes, <laughs> actually. So the opening, the opening, they're like crawling on their hands and knees towards you, but it's a very like from the ring moment. Like okay. it's not choreographed well. Oh, okay. Um. So it's it's like they're and they're making it's like direct eye contact and it's dark. And the only human in the whole film is there. Right. And the the eye contact and the crawling towards you in the dark with a cat human inside of a bag is <laughs> alarming. 
I'm, I'm alarmed by the description alone. Um, and then there's another part where like the moon rises and there's some weird things with their tails going on. Okay. And you're and that's that was a little alarming. Right. Um, it sounds kind of frightening, of it, honestly. Yeah, I, I didn't care for Rebel Wilson's character in it. I think she didn't play a cat. I think she played herself. Okay. And that kind of detracted. And I didn't like that they put Taylor Swift's song she wrote for it interspliced with memory, because I think that took away from memory's Memories, moment. Memory's right. Okay. Um, but the whole thing is watchable. It is watchable. <laughs> it's you. You. It's definitely more watchable if you've seen Cats previously and if you like weird things. Okay. If you're so th there's there's the uh, Netflix tagline. <laughs> Cats. It's watchable. <laughs> The CGI, and like I said, I saw the unpatched version. Like, there, it's, if you enjoy animation or know anything about it, yep. <laughs> you might need to pregame. Okay. A little bit, because you'll know what to look for. <laughs> And you will think, how did this ever get out of theaters finished? And the answer is it wasn't, right. because they had to patch it. Right. That's, uh, um, that's, I saw someone compare it to Jupiter funny. Ascending, and I thought that was uh, ascending, and I thought that was insulting to Ju Jupiter. Jupiter Ascending. Yeah, I was like, no, 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 I followed that. Right. Like that, that was a fever dream, <laughs> but it had it. It went places. Right. This is more of a fever nightmare. <laughs> um, a fever confusion. It's definitely feverish. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, with that, let's look at some minis. Yeah. <laughs> now that I've left you all questioning. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, uh, first up, we have uh, Mark's uh, The Longhorn Ooh. from Wrath of Kings. That's, that's some pretty colors. Yeah. I... I like the how the yellow is brought in on the hair and then down with the hand. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, the having that. Uh, I guess the the green is connecting the the yellow and the yeah. the blue there is pulling those together. But uh, the crazy thing is that these are the like the faction standard faction color. Yeah. Is um, red, reds and blacks oh, and wow. like a purplish gray skin. Yeah. So it's really wild seeing it in uh, in this different different scheme. Like teals and blues and yeah. a little bit of hot pink going on in there. Is that hot pink? I can't. I, I think it's no. red, but it's yep. next to the blue. It looks pinkish. Yeah. But no, looking cool, Mark. I think, uh, yeah, crazy choices. They're looking good. I like it. Mariano. Hang up. Ooh, That's a little it rat. Is, it is a little rat man. It's a little rat man. A little skaven. Looking very cool. Pardon? It looks like Skaven? Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, definitely. Um, from uh, Warhammer. But uh, yeah, looking good. And I love the, the little banner, the, the uh, horned god uh, icon painted on there too. Looks very nice. Good work. I kind of want to get a little Skaven mini and paint it like a possum. A possum? Yeah. Okay. A little possum yeah, there. Probably do that. That'd be cute. Just turn the ears a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Puff your cheeks. Oh wait, no, you're thinking like an opossum? Like a like an American possum. Okay, yeah. Ooh. Trim the cheeks back. Tiny ears. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger, more vicious teeth. Um, sorry, I was thinking Australian possums. They're much cuter. They are. Uh, so Jason. Jason is working on this on this dragon. Looking uh cool. I think um I like the the tone of red that is. Yeah. With the brown, I think it's really nice. It's kind of rusty well. red, brick yeah. red. Yeah, I think a brick Not red. Yeah. yeah, brick red kind of thing. It's looking good. And yeah, loads and loads of spines down the back. Yeah. Great. Be a tough one to pick up. Be too spiky. Spiky. Nope. Oh. Orion uh, finished up from Mini Wizard Studios. Finished up with the Beholder. Ooh. I love the colors on that. I that, like uh, the purple mouth. Yep. I'm going to say yes because the camera is right in the way. I'm going to lean over. 
Oh. Yeah, no, it's that. like a nice pop. Of, everything's a very neutral kind of uh, yep. sandy color, and then that nice purple. The pop of bubble. Just yeah. Burr. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think that sort of the uh, the bluish, the, again that teal color for the eye, mm -hmm. and the eyes, looking really good. Very nice work. Very nice base too. Yeah. Ooh. Cabra firm and Cthulhu. Looks like it's glowing. Cthulhu. Looks like it would glow under black light. <gasps> oh yeah. Doesn't it? The kind of that color scheme. Yep, I think so. I love the uh, sort of the little veins of um, green across the the head. Yeah. Can you see them at the back there? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. <laughs> Caught that just perfectly. Uh, but yeah, that looks great, Abra. Everything looks very nautical and spooky. Definitely spooky. Spooky. Love the Cthulhu's. Garrett's mini painting. Oh. Ooh. Arch Cavalos. Speaking mounted combat. Zendos. Yeah. So I think this is from the uh, the new Ossiark Bone Reapers, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, for Warhammer Age Sigma. But that is an amazing. Actually, I'm going to lean over and look this way. <laughs> The, that's cool. That's cool. We'll rearrange it for next time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I love the love the work on that. The um, it's interesting having the the bone mm -hmm. bone sort of colors, and then the uh, the yellows, uh, a bit separated by the blue. Yeah, works really well. I think it's looking uh, looking great. Nice choices. Good work there. Oh, don't think it's been <laughs> nice. The uh, I love the um, I mean the snow troopers. Yeah. But uh, having them on the um, like an inner desert, mm -hmm. having the desert squad looks very cool. All of the uh, like the cloth being that uh, tan color looks really good. Again, cool choices there, Timothy. Nice work. I'm a big fan of that gun. So, <laughs> oh, Spider Man. Day. Spider-Man from Marvel, uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol. It'd be very cool. I like how saturated all the colors are. Yeah. It's very comic booky. Yep. Yep, for sure. I think uh, I think you're absolutely right. I really love the um, the work on the the thighs. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm not sure if Spider-Man's thighs actually look like that. I think they've just been exaggerated a little bit for <laughs> for miniatures purposes. But uh, well, I but Matt, you've done a great job. Dancer. This is true. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I think Matt's done a really good job of picking Tom him Tom Holland, out. way in. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag Tom Holland. Hashtag, yeah. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> okay. And uh, this one here. Oh, Hero Forge Mini. So I like the teal and that bronze. Yeah. Such a good mm -hmm. color scheme together. Very cool. But yeah. So... This one would be so Hero Forge model. The Hero Forge are the ones who do the uh, 3D printing. You can go onto their website and create your own mini. Ooh. Uh, create, uh, adjust the pose. You can change the weapons that they're holding That's or cool. whatever they're holding, um, the type of clothing they're wearing, and then they 3D print it and send it to you. That's so, really cool. Um, yeah, this is looking uh, great. I think one of the things that always worries me about 3D printing is mm -hmm. getting lines, <laughs> but. Um, Shadow here has obviously gone for the uh, the highest quality of, of printing because I don't see any lines. It's looking great. Oh, a little bit on the shield maybe, but uh, but no, looking really good. Very nice. Oh, Jun is painting. Oh, that's looking nice. Oh, Jun, come on! You gotta say what the mini is. <laughs> you gotta help us out here. I can tell the hair looks lovely though. Yep. Pardon? Working on the sword. Yeah. Bloody sword. The bloody sword. I hope so. Fire. Oh, so. oh, fire sword. Is it a bit? We're all blind here. We need to zoom in a little bit on some of these yeah. photos. Yeah. I think we should talk about that. Sorry. But uh, no, looking good. I think yeah. The, the but the hair and the um, that blue and the cloak. Very, that very nice. vibrant blue is working really well. Oh, you know what? Beautifully together. I can see that it's a fire sword because. You have to. So we're far away and we're both blind. But if you if you stare until your eyeballs hurt, then you'll see there's wiggles. Oh, I, I can see the wiggles. Yeah. I went to Australia, of course, so I got to see the wiggles. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they they 
That was. They were somewhere else. Fruit salad. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Yes, you do. Um, <laughs> thank you, June. <laughs> You're the call, Mitty. Thank you. Uh, Ed, Ed is working on... Oh, my goodness. This is crazy. Ooh. Is dual yeah. shield wielding? Is that a thing that you can do in D&D? Man, I hope I, so. Yeah, that would be cool to do. Yep. But it looks like, yeah, you could bring them together to protect yourself like that or yeah. tear them apart and then just... Yeah, you could whack people with... You can definitely yeah, with use shields offensively, so... Yeah. But, uh, no, looking very cool. And I love that uh, that lion face painted on the on the shield there. Looking great. Yeah. Yep. It looks very, like... It reminds me of the Lion King a little bit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like got that... When Rafiki uh, is, like, drawing... Uh, Everything. Yeah, they're very style, yeah. stylized uh, piece. But yeah, looking good, Ed. Very nice. <gasps> cool. Oh, it's so cute. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's that is adorable. He Fruits looks like he's going to give me there, a very important speech about friendship. <laughs> <laughs> it's the eyes that are saying friendship, right? The, the eyes are saying... The but, pose is saying important speech, yeah, it's, and the it's, eyes are saying friendship. Yes, but, like, the confidence of oh, yeah, that yeah. friendship speech is just, like, yes. Yep. That's that's a protagonist right there. It's the it's the uh, speech from Henry V, right? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I can't remember how it goes. But it was... Uh, very uh, stirringly delivered by Kenneth Branagh in the movie. Uh, but yeah, no, looking great. I think um, chibi miniatures are always a, a, a tough one to do, and the eyes are the most important part, <laughs> I think. But yeah. uh, Rob's done an awesome job there. Great work. Very crisp. <laughs> <laughs> Want to test my 3D printer? Well, so I think the test was successful. Success. Yeah. Is that a moisture evaporator? I think it might be. Yep. Yeah. And the astromech droid. droid. Yeah, looking very good. I've kind of been getting a little bit excited about Legion again. Star Wars Legion again. Oh, oh. Yeah. Was it the new movie that, that you I haven't handled? seen the new movie yet. Neither Going have I. Going to see I. it on Saturday. Yeah. Um, I went see Cats first. <laughs> Do we have enough time to ask? <laughs> I have so many questions to ask. <laughs> so many questions. But, uh, no, I think um, I just saw, uh, saw the... Fantasy Flight Games were releasing a um, Cassian Andor and uh, KS20 mm -hmm. um, box set. Okay. Which made me think I should maybe put together a little Rebel Strike Force. But uh, no, looking looking great there, Alexander. Very nice. I think successful print. Always down to paint more Star Wars here. Yeah. Maybe maybe in the next week or so. Or well, a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. That's maybe. it for now? Yeah. Okay, we well, will come back. Maybe we can go watch the new Star Wars and then we can paint. While we talk about it. Yeah. And give away all and the And enough time in the future to where we won't spoil it. Right. Yes. Uh, yes. We don't want to spoil it. We're no, not interested in doing that. No. <laughs> no. One of the things I'm really excited about, I yeah. will say, as far as the, like the, the whole spoilers thing mm -hmm. goes, is that uh, we went through... Is there eight episodes of Mandalorian? Oh. Is there eight? Or yeah. is it six? Or I'm not sure. I don't know. I haven't watched that yet. We just got our Disney Plus in. Yeah. So I haven't yet. We didn't want to. We got a free like sample of Disney Plus. Oh, right. Cool. So we haven't quite binge watched that yet. Right. We're, um, I think we're, we're going to be signing up for that this weekend. So you can see that as well. Because obviously we didn't want to hmm. for a whole month while we were away. Uh, but... So far, I still have no idea what any of the, the plot is for The Mandalorian. Yeah, I know what the tone is going to be. I know what to look forward to, but I don't know much about the actual plot. I know itself. that there's loads of Baby Yoda and... Uh, the child. And some guy who says, I have spoken. So... Well. That's, and that's it. So congratulations, Internet. You've done a wonderful job. You know what? And that I is how you get excited about something. I had a lot something. of fun watching. And, oh. I don't know if you watched it. Did you watch The Witcher yet? Uh, I started watching it uh, last night. I decided. And probably fell asleep. Oh. But not because, <laughs> but not because it was boring, but because I was jet lagged. Uh, That's why. Uh, 
<laughs> Wait, just got Disney Plus after you went to see Cats. Girl, let's get your priorities. <laughs> Listen, okay, I can't see the Star Wars stuff without the boyfriend because that would just be mean. But he did watch Witcher without me and then was like, oh, well, I didn't think you'd be interested. I didn't think you'd be interested in this show where the guy and has has two swords and kills things with the swords. And I was like, who Has he not you? met you? I asked him, I was like, who are you dating? <laughs> I decided that the Witcher has is... paying if, attention. If there was a Venn diagram... Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you had Lord of the Rings, and then you had Xena Warrior Princess, and then you had Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Right. Witcher would be in the middle of that Venn diagram. Okay, right on. According to me. Um, <laughs> I will look for those things. So, well, no, it's its own thing. That's sure. why I said oh, Venn yeah, diagram yeah. of like style and tone, sure. I should say. Um, and it's very fun. It's, it's a fun time. I had lots of fun with it. Uh, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, I thought it took itself just serious enough to be serious when it needed to be, okay. right? Right, yeah. And to explore some interesting themes, but not so seriously that everything was gritty, dark, tones. Right, okay. They yep. were still able to have fun. Right, And okay. I think that made it a lot more human, too. Sure. So that's yeah. the Buffy the Vampire Slayer angle of it. I guess so. The kind like, of the yeah. humor, humorous sort of. It was. It was. It managed to be very well balanced, in my opinion. Right. Any cool. of the sword play was really cool. That's good. I look forward to uh, <laughs> to watching the rest of it. Uh, Carl says the Mandalorian was very good, although it can be summed up as Clint Eastwood in a bucket. But I love it. <laughs> I enjoy that nice. description of it so much <laughs> that now I'm even extra interested in watching the Mandalorian. That's awesome. Um, yep. <laughs> very cool. Oh, sh I'm on the Witcher episode. There were no spoilers for the Witcher in my in my description. Uh, it was a spoiler-free Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the, the diagram of tone. Yes. Yeah, that's all it was. It's it's very good though. If if those are things that you enjoy, then you will also very much enjoy the Witcher. Cool. Um, and they're definitely things I enjoy. That sounds good. I think that the boyfriend was just like, you don't play video games. And I was like, that irrelevant in this case. <laughs> yep. It was a book. It was a book, and I do read books. So <laughs> that was my argument. And then he's like, well, did you read the books? And I was like, no. <laughs> I so do now. Was it a book first and then a video game? Yeah. Okay. Um, I had no idea about any of it as anything that existed because my childhood consisted with like living under rocks i guess <laughs> or picking them up i did pick up Turn a lot over. of rocks I and looking for things that were living under there yeah, so you well, could I'd... tell them about the witcher <laughs> hello <laughs> i'd put them in my pocket and i would call them my fossils oh, okay yep. and then my mom would do the laundry right and she'd say gretchen where did these rocks come from <laughs> and i'd say i don't know <laughs> from the washing machine, obviously. How did these rocks get in your pockets? I don't know. I'm uncertain. <sighs> David Moffat. I love the Silent Guys episode of Buffy. I, too, love the Silent Guys episode of Buffy. It's a very good episode. Is that the, with the creepy? Yes. Sort of tall, thin guys? Yes. Right. It won awards. It yeah? Was, yeah, it was just very good. Excellent. Uh -huh. I did not know. Uh, Carl's reminding me that we need to remind all the new people that came and joined us in chat that we are giving away <gasps> these cloud giants, and they should use hashtag cloud giant and definitely not hashtag fee fi fo fum. You're the best, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Excellent. Yes, uh, so if you'd like to win... This one or this one, not both. You can win this one or this one. So we're giving away two, though. Is that right? Two. Yeah, the two that would be up here. These two? Yes. Okay. So I can't steal this one? No. Okay. Follow us in the group. 
Yes, follow us in the group so that you can tell if you've won. Otherwise, that's going to be a pity. <laughs> I'm just going to jump on and hashtag Cloud Giant. Uh, but yep. make sure if you don't follow us on our Facebook group that you go ahead now and just and join click in the there. button. Yeah, it's easy. Easy peasy, lemon it squeezy. It is indeed. And you too may have a chance to win. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, you can join the uh, Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. Um, where we chat about minis, we talk about them, we, uh, we ask questions, we give answers, do all sorts of things in there. Um, it was cool while I was away to, um, to see some of the minis that came up. Yeah. And uh, see some of the conversations going on. I think I even was able to uh, approve a couple of people wow. to join the group. Look the, at you. The wonders of Working modern technology. Overtime. I know. It was uh, it was pretty impressive. <laughs> Working from the other side of the planet. Good job, man. Technology this is, why we is keep amazing. You around. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. See, if I hadn't done that, this would be my last show. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Gretchen just said. That's what I heard. That was the sub. That was the subtext. <laughs> Analyze the subtext. Oh, yeah. Wow. That is some strong subtext. Wait, that's what that wasn't it. <laughs> <laughs> I think your your line was that's why we keep you around. It no. was okay, cool. <laughs> as long as I understood. <laughs> All good. But Brian, yes. Subscribe. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Bye. Good job, cool. Brian. Brian was Thank not you. distracted by. <laughs> 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 by our shenanigans. Our crazy so, shenanigans. So, here's a thing that I think we should talk about real quick. Yep. So, I am dry brushing yep. right now oh. all over the wings of this bird to mm. kind of give more of a plush feel to the plumage. Okay. Yep. Right? Oh. Uh, there we go. So, there we go. Doing some dry brushing. Looking to good. To give some depth and feel and texture to the already textured stuff. And you wrote an article. See, I was about to about. pretend that I wasn't sure where the segue was going. <laughs> but After I worked so hard on that segue, <laughs> no, I did. hear in my brain you like, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do, this is gonna be smooth like butter. It's Sorry, not I, I'm not at all smooth like butter. It. Smooth um, like rocks. Rocks, rocks, rocks. Where's rocks? So yes, uh, in, so in the uh, January issue, uh, issue 239, KJ Magazine, that has the Gloomy Graves cover. It should have been the October issue. It should have been. Yeah. I know. It looks very cool, though. That's what I said. They we need, never. We need to check that out. So <laughs> in the in Gloomy Graves cover, uh, they're actually in each issue of Game Trade Magazine, we have a um, Painting Happy Little Minis, Minis article. This one is on dry brushing. I think the previous issue was on layering. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in this one, i show you uh, some quick steps, basic stuff about uh, dry brushing, uh, using it for metals, using it for scenery mm -hmm. and stone, feathers, a uh -huh. section of feathers there, so just talking about it. So uh, yeah, if you're in your local uh, hobby store, pick up Game Trade Magazine. So we put, uh, put an article in every month, I think uh, the February issue is going to be uh, basing, yeah. sort of basic basing. Uh, the March issue will be more advanced basing. Uh, I say will be. More basing? Basing, more basing. two. Basing two. Uh, I say more advanced basing because I haven't written it yet. But it should be, I'll, I'll be working on it next week. You're never supposed to tell it. You should, I, listen, you got I, to. I love to pull back the curtain. I'm sure people have the sausage is made. You know, I've made sausage before. Yep. That was also an experience. Not like cats, though. Right, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> the same sort of experience as cats. It wasn't. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. But, uh, yeah. So, check out Game Trade Magazine. And, yeah. Actually, I'm, I, have, I haven't spoken to him yet. I haven't spoken to Jerome yet, the uh, editor of Game Trade Magazine. But one of the things I'd like to do is take the... I think we're up to episode, let me find it again. 
Uh, episode 19. Oh. So what I'd like to do, actually, is, is get the, um, the first 12 episodes, so the first year's worth of uh, articles, and put them together as a PDF and pop That'd it up cool. on, the, um, on the Penny Happy Little Minis Facebook group. I think that would be neat. That'd be very neat. As I expect, it's probably tough to find those, those copies of the Game Trade magazine. Yeah, that's the old one. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, so we'll, we'll give you uh, updated information as that comes to hand. Can the magazine be purchased in the UK? Can the magazine be purchased in the UK? I think so. Leona goes, I think so. Actually, I have a feeling that um, it might not be available. Okay. Uh, well, sorry, it might not be available through stores in the UK. Um, Game Trade Magazine is put together by uh, Alliance Game Distributors, who are US based. US focused. Yes, that was the, the next thing. So Leona has pointed out that you can subscribe to it. Uh, if you head to. Well, if you do it. Pardon? Game Trade Magazine dot com slash store? Yeah. Cool. Or a Google search for Game Trade Magazine. Uh, you will find where that can be done. Google solves so many problems. Indeed. Indeed. I was excited to. Pardon? <laughs> PDF, good idea. P yes, the PDF? Yeah, I think that'd be fun. The first year I kind of covered um, different colors. So it was like, here's how to do red, here's how to do yellow. Mm -hmm. All that sort of stuff. So the yellow one was was being done before uh, contrast paints, which are now completely changed the way that I would <laughs> do <laughs> yellows. Um, but uh, yeah, just some basic ideas in there. But I think it'll be helpful for for new folks who are just getting into painting and finding their rhythm. But yeah, hopefully everybody got uh, some paints or some miniatures or some gift cards to their local hobby store over the holidays. Sadly, I didn't, so I just had to go and spend my own money. But that was fine. It was kind of funny, like, I think the day before Christmas, maybe two days before Christmas, my wife and I looked at each other and I said to her, did you get me anything for Christmas? And she was like, no. Aww. And I was like, that's, that's good, because I didn't get you anything either. <laughs> oh, no, that's, Oh, okay. no, 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 that was, that was fine. We're, we're okay with that. As long as it's agreed upon. Yeah. I got, but, I got the bow a, uh, a mini fridge for his gaming computer, like next to it. Next to his gaming computer? Yeah. So he doesn't have to get up? Nope, he yeah. can just keep all his energy drinks right there. All right. Now you have to time how long he sits in that chair. Let's see what the, the longest period is. <laughs> well. I don't know. I can tell you that after uh, doing a couple of long flights, that I can, I can sit still for a very long time. Very long. Yeah. Oh, okay. That'll be cool. Oh, great. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, Russell Higgins has put in hashtag butter. <laughs> smooth as. See, someone thinks you're smooth. No, it's not me. <laughs> I'm not smooth. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I knew there was something that I'd forgotten. We remember most things. <laughs> um, I'm using a, a sort of a pretty uh, sort of mix of stuff. The Reaper. Now, the uh, all of the WizKids um, novels, novels Marvelous Miniatures come pre-primed with a Vallejo primer, uh, and then they're assembled. So this one has a 
has a clear stand there, so it, to help it look like it's floating. So um, we didn't go. Good sound. Pardon? Good sound. That's the sound of death coming for you. <laughs> keep, keep an ear out. You need to know when to run. Um, but uh, so what I decided to do for this one is I hit it with the um, Bacillacanum gray first as like a, um, I guess, a subcoat, just to get that all over the you know, layer, all over the primer. Um, what I was saying before, because of this, we didn't want to prime, we didn't want to spray prime it with black, because um, it didn't have any uh, like blue tack or putty to put around, yeah. the, put over the stem. But if you have some putty, that's probably a way to go. Put it over the stem, prime it black, be a lot quicker. But uh, yeah, so I hit it with a bit of silicone gray and I let that dry first. Uh, once that was dry, I came back with the contrast black Templar paint. So that's given a nice sort of black cloth kind of look over the model. And uh, yep, so I'll probably just leave the uh, leave the cloth as is, and come back and hit the the haft of the scythe, the blade of the scythe, and then the little skeletal hands that are sticking out of the robes there. And I think I need to hit this face one more time, or well, the lack of face, the shadow. Can you make the blade glow? Can I make the blade glow? Yes. Oh, what kind of deathly glow should we do we want? Uh, like a bluey glow, I think. A bluey glow? Cool. Like very ethereal, but also kind of neutral in terms, because death cares not for any of that kind yeah. of stuff. Death oh. is neutral. Okay. So a neutral blue glowing yeah. thing. Okay, let's see what we can do. <laughs> let's see how we can interpret that. Uh, and then, on this one, uh, the one to fill in time, uh, Nasdreg Yellow. Contrast for the uh, sort of the hindquarters, the lion hindquarters, and uh, contrast griffhound orange for the the feathers up top. Okay. And then for the uh, these the outer feathers here that I'm doing kind of in a white, I'm mixing some uh, Vallejo uh, beige brown here with some of the Vallejo bone white. Am I using bone white? Nope, my bad. Using ivory. There it is. Jeez, Dave, it's like you don't ivory. even know your colors. I don't. I'm just having fun today. Just messing around. Not paying any attention to what I'm doing. Good uh, way to start off 2020. Yeah, that's the way I started off 2019. And look where that got me. But uh, yeah, so I've just mixed, I mixed the two, painted in sort of some shadow up close to the edge of the orange feathers there. And then you can come back and just sort of, uh, I'm going to use the term feather, just feather these out. Okay. Feather these feathers out. So not really a dry brush, kind of an over, over brush to sort of pick those out. And then what I was doing on, on the underside here, over this side, is getting that uh, a little bit more of sort of the straight beige brown and painting that into some spots there, some shadows around there. Okay. Just add a little bit of extra definition. Gretchen. What am I doing? Uh, I'm, well, currently I am using gold and then I'm gonna tone it down a little bit because uh, I was like, oh, gold eagle, but literally. Um, <laughs> right, okay. I realized I didn't know how plumage on an eagle actually works. Um, but I'm picking, uh, actually, the way I want it to look looks way much more like what the camera's picking up. So we're going to pretend I did it this way I want. Um, <laughs> oh, cool. Because it doesn't, it looks more bronze and less yellow. So hopefully, after I do a wash, it'll look more like what everyone sees on the screen. Um, but I went through with a base color uh, with the contrast paints, and I used. Dark Oath Flush, uh, that I couldn't 
like almost spill just then. Oh. And then I, I went back through with some Albert Brown and uh, kind of dry brushed on top of that to add a little bit more depth to the uh, the contour of the wings. And then darkened that up and went back again to pull out a little bit more details. And then now with the gold, I'm going back and I'm focusing a little bit more on the details in the feathers to kind of pick them out a little individually here and there so that they uh, they look more feathery and then, is that the right term? Look more uh, feathery? Totally. Look more totally. like feathers. Um, and then I'm probably gonna go back through with that with a wash to tone it down on my end and then um, play around with a little bit of black on the underside to pick up, uh, as, you know you see those kind of flecks Yep. In uh, the plumage, that's yep. what I'm going to attempt to do, and we'll see if it works. Okay. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, so no, that it looks fine. kind of like uh, has a, a natural-esque color situation, but then that little hint of gold will hopefully just peek through here and there yep. after the wash is on, and then it'll kind of have that like slightly, if you squint your eyes, it looks a little bit grander than... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, painting feathers is always a a fun one. There's so many so many possibilities. I love options. painting feathers, whether it's actual like these where I'm picking out like a physical yep. uh, many, or if I'm painting feathers um, with watercolors or anything. It's hard to mess up feathers too, which is why I find it relaxing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. At least I think it's hard to mess up feathers. I think. Um, on miniatures, mm -hmm. like if, if the miniature has well sculpted feathers like these, yeah. where you've got a lot of that texture, mm -hmm. things like uh, washes and dry brushing can really help you out, really give you that um, that great starting point. Um, where if you then want to go and add more in, like you're adding in the that gold and the washes, um, or if you're doing like a something like a peacock with like oh, the yeah. shimmering mm -hmm. um, blue Happy green kind of peak. look. That would be cool. Well, like a spotted owl. See, you get it. Yep. You get what I'm about here. Exactly. Um. Was that talking about the flex that you were? Yeah. You were talking about putting in. Yeah. We'll see if that happens the way I want it to happen. <laughs> yeah. uh. It could be good. One place that uh, that we visited when I was in Australia is. Um, in my hometown, there's uh, an area called Blackbutt Reserve. Mm. And there they have um, just a, a fairly small um, sort of collection of uh, Australian animals. So they have wombats and uh, goannas and all sorts of Australian birds and so on, and uh, emus and kangaroos and wallabies, that kind of thing. But uh, as well as that, they have, uh, as well as Australian animals, they have a uh, peacock, a couple of peacocks, and some peahens. Peacocks are so mean. Roaming the uh, the grounds, oh, like free roaming. But uh, so we've seen them there before, and they've always been fine. Uh, but this time around, there was uh, one of the peahens had four pea chicks. Oh, so she was a little. Uh, they, they were wandering around, and they were following her around like ducks. That's adorable. Yeah, it was great. My daughters loved it. They thought it was uh, awesome. See, my great-grandpa had, um, he raised sheep and rabbits and had peacocks. Okay. And, um... It seems like a very interesting... <laughs> <laughs> In Louisiana, he had sheep. Can you imagine the, shearing the sheep in Louisiana? No, I don't want to think nah. about that. <laughs> um, we like doing it in the Australian outback, but way more damp. Uh, but yeah, he bred rabbits to eat. Right. Okay. Um, I was just wondering about the how the peacocks. Sort of I, connected. I think he just had them. He just liked them. They were just mean, is all right. I remember. Okay. I was like they. Fierce little things. Um, a different brush shapes can aid the angles you need to hit sometimes. 
So, no, up more, Clive. What do the straight dry brushes offer over the more cone-shaped dry brushes? Oh, that's an interesting question. I think I have some in my, I actually have some sitting here. Uh -huh. Brushes. We'll come, we'll come back to the peacocks in a second. Different. Sorry. That's okay. Um, this, uh, this brush here is an older um, version of the kind of the straight edge. Mm -hmm. Dry brush. Uh, I think we actually have some sitting here. I'm going to reach across. Do it. Grab that one. So there's a better example, a fresher example. Those fresh brushes. <laughs> this, is, this is how it can end up looking. <laughs> it, it will be eventually, yeah. Uh, typically, uh, for smaller dry brushes, um, having that sharper uh, or the flatter edge across the top um, can uh, help you get into uh, tighter spots, tighter areas. So if you need to get in around here, sort of dry brushing uh, close to an area but without spilling mm -hmm. over onto another one, you can get in a little bit tighter with the, that sharp point at the corner. When you've got uh, something that's a little bit larger but is rounded, as you can see there, um, these ones are better for a, a larger all-over dry brush because if you were to try and get in to the corners, you're going to end up sort of touch it, sort of hitting other areas as well. Okay. So these are good for a, like a, a first dry brush or an overall dry brush. So say, for example, I had primed this guy black and I wanted to dry brush the whole thing with a gray, then this would be perfect for that because you can then it's easier to move it around in all sorts of different shapes, uh, different directions, sorry. But uh, th so the same goes for this. So this is a, it's kind of a, a thin or a flattened version. You can get um, dry brushes that are kind of this sort of uh, profile all the way around. So like a, uh, yeah. more of that, um, that conical shape. It was being discussed, but uh, yeah, that's the, kind of the difference between the two. This one will help you get into tighter areas. You need to do some dry brushing and avoid hitting other areas. Oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh -huh. Thank you, Laguna. Like this one, oh, which is huge. Um, I think this has also got, um, I'm not sure what the hair is on this one, but uh, it's, a, it's a thicker hair than usual. Mm -hmm. Your brushes. Corsa. Um, Corsa. Um, thank you. Uh, but that's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be. Uh, that's going to means it's going to be more sturdy. Uh, it's going to last longer. Something like this is going to be great for uh, scenery or for uh, large vehicles um, or really large any like really large dry brushing you're going to need to do. Uh, but yeah, that's so that's the difference. I think um, on here. Can you pass me the the one with the the angled cut that's this right one? there. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So this one um, has kind of an angled cut on it. Uh, but you can, as you can, you can see there, the, the bristles come together, forming a, not quite a point, but coming back towards a point there. This is listed as a, a base brush. It's one of the Citadel base brushes, uh, the XL. So this is for base coating. So this isn't for dry brushing. You could use it for dry brushing. And that little edge there is going to let you get even closer in. Mm -hmm. But dry brushing with something like this is really going to start to splay it out quite quickly. I mean, this one that I was showing you before, where the edges are all splayed out. I've had this one for quite a while. I've used this for a lot of dry brushing. So if you tried to use this one for that the same idea, and that's all you used it for, it would splay out very quickly. This is not really put together to be a, a dry brush. But something like this that is, you'll get quite a lot of dry brushing out of it. it explains why so many of my brushes just look horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's often Gretchen's the uh, makeup brush. I actually, I will say, it does look like a makeup brush, yes, the big giant one. Um, I have used paint brushes that have the chisel tip for eyeliner. 
Okay. Because, and I will, so one, they're cheaper than makeup brushes. Right. You lick paintbrushes, you can't judge me. Um, <laughs> there was no judging. There was no judging, um, there was just silly faces. But they have a longer handle than most makeup brushes. Right, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's you're able to be, actually- you right up here. Yeah, you can actually like do stuff. Um, and they're cheaper, they're like, Five dollars cheaper. They'll be like, "This is ten dollars for an eyeliner brush," and I'll be like, "I'll go to Michaels." Right. Uh, there you go. <laughs> uh, but yes, you can use um, makeup brushes as well. Oh yeah. For these. But yes, that's uh, so. That's the difference between the between the two. If it's a larger, rounder kind of look, you can use that for larger all over mm. kind of things. It'll cover quicker, obviously. But yeah. Cool. There we go. I'll pop those back in. Oh. Excellent. Um, that also <laughs> reminds me, though. Hopefully that answered folks, uh, someone's question. Yes, it did, I think. But, uh, yes. The, uh, somebody had a question, uh, Leona pointed it out to us on the, uh, in the group. What is a good airbrush? Ah, yes. Wait, you have to be airbrush, Dave. Now he's cool man airbrush, Dave, and he's going to answer some questions. No. Um, okay. <laughs> airbrush Dave is not going to answer that. Or he's not going to answer like that. Um, there, are, there are quite a few airbrushes around, quite a few. Um, two people ask this. Two people? Yeah. Does it mean I have to turn my hat around again? But uh, Man, yeah, airbrush Dave is so fun. I don't know why you never keep him around. Ah, you know, me and my <laughs> lack of whimsy. But uh, no, um, quite a few good airbrush uh, brands around. Uh, there is um, Badger, um, Harder and Steenbeck, mm -hmm. um, Grex, Iwata, and. Each of them have uh, have a different, so like slightly different approach uh, to how they do things. Um, the probably the I think the key to, to picking a good airbrush depends on what you want to do with it. Um, airbrushes like uh, the Grex airbrushes mm -hmm. have a um, kind of a, a pistol grip and a trigger action. That's cool. So if you're doing lots of spraying. Um, if you're spraying a base coat down on an army of miniatures. Oh, that can hit your hands eventually. Yeah, if you're doing it like like this with a yeah. run, it'd be kind of tough. But the, the trigger action lets you just do oh. and spray loads of uh, base coats down, which is really good. Um, obviously, if you get quite practiced, you can be doing your more detailed highlighting mm -hmm. with um, with the trigger action. Um, Badger is uh, one that I use. Um, I have got a um, Badger Chrome, um, which allows me to, to do that base coating, but also get in and do a little bit of uh, sort of highlighting, yeah. a little bit of detailing, um, get a little bit closer. I'm not particularly skilled with my airbrush yet. I've had it for a long That's time. That's because you don't put your, hair, your head hat bound backwards and become Airbrush Dave. So you think I should do that? Yeah. You have to be cool man airbrush, Dave. Okay. I don't, think, I, I don't think even turning my hat around is going to make me cool. It worked for Pokemon. Okay. There we go. Uh, this is true. So I, I should try that at home. But uh, we get a little bit more practiced. Um, I have uh, a whole bunch of friends who use um, Badger airbrushes. Uh, I have some friends who use Harder and Steenbeck airbrushes. Um, my friends, uh, Caleb and Kat, who run CK Studios. They do airbrushing classes all over the country. That's cool. So they probably, they, they travel around uh, and do weekend classes. Um, and they have uh, like airbrushing 101, airbrushing 102, and airbrushing 103, where for that final one, you get to the point where you're so skilled you can paint like 95% of a model. That's really cool. Or a larger model with, a, with the airbrush. Um, they use Harder and Steenbeck. I think I think might actually having, be having like a CK Studios branded Harder and Steenbeck airbrush coming out soon, um, which is pretty neat. Um, but yeah, the 
probably the, the best advice and much the, the same way as I say when people ask what paints should I use, what paints should I start with, is grab the paints that are available locally yeah. so you can source them locally. It's easy to get more of what you just finished using. Um, same sort of thing with airbrushes is it, get an airbrush where you can um, buy replacement needles, uh, needles and, and caps uh, easily because you don't want to have something where you have to special order, or send away overseas yeah. kind of thing. Um, so if you've got something that you can order fairly quickly because airbrushes, the, the toughest part of keeping an airbrush going is that the, um, the needle tips are super, super fine. Yeah. And, and if they take any sort of knock. Oh no, I like, see where this is going. Yeah, they, they will, the end will bend, the tip will bend and you can't use it. Oh. And so you get a new needle, a new cap to go with it because it's fitted perfectly to those caps. Um, so yeah, you've got to be super careful. Unfortunately, you can't just take the airbrush needle and go, can move out of your mouth and visible. smooth it out. So, um, no, no, not at all. Um, they are very, very much a precision instrument. You gotta be very careful with them, um, clean them properly and carefully and, uh, and that kind of thing. But yeah, so my, my advice for the starting airbrush would be look at what is, is gonna be available um, and easy for you to get locally locally or online in your country. The, um, and pretty much with, the same as with anything else. Um, things, uh, oh, David Moffat says, I have a Chrome too. Dave's Unite. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, the thing is with airbrush, initially you might go, well, I'll just get a cheap one. Cheaper isn't, uh, there's a reason that sometimes that airbrushes are cheaper. <laughs> is they're not quite as good. Um, so ha think about what you want to do with it. Think about how long you want to be using it for um, and make a make an informed decision okay. on uh, the airbrushes you choose. And some, and some uh, game stores have airbrushes? Yeah, yep, definitely. Uh, some ga uh, game stores um, sell airbrushes, uh, hobby stores, um, Michael's, AC more that kind of thing, um, sell sell them to. Uh, but do they have them out so you can test them? Uh, some of them do, yeah. Uh, for example, um, games and stuff, uh, which is our one of our local stores, they have uh, a range of Grex products, and they have little um, sort of extractor booths set up at their painting area, so you can sit down and test them, test them out, try out the That's different uh, airbrushes cool. and see how they they go. They also run uh, the occasional um, airbrushing class there. Uh, so yeah, you got that sort of thing. Um, we're certainly lucky enough to have uh, competition minis here in Baltimore too, and they have a huge range of, uh, of products there. But uh, yeah, I think there are quite a few game stores around that, that do that. Sahara says the fumes were really bad. Never again. Oh, for airbrushing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, uh, it, it, when you're using airbrush, an airbrush, um, having a small sort of extractor hood or extra, uh, it's airbrushing booth where the, there's going to be a fan that's pulling the air away from you. So if you've got um, some of all thin their paints with uh, isopropyl alcohol, or they use that to, um, to clean the airbrush, oh. that fumes for, if you're using that in an enclosed space, that can be uh, a little bit tough. Oh, all yeah. right. Yep, so you want to be careful about that one. But uh, yeah, I would, uh, I would suggest checking online as well. There are a lot of um, great uh, painters who are working with airbrushes and, and they'll have, uh, no doubt have videos that you can check out um, on the use and care of an airbrush. Very cool. I think um, we haven't finalized it yet as well. This is another thing that we've been talking about, that we talked about before the um, before the break, was uh, the possibility of me working on a large model. Yeah. Uh, people wanted to see working on something much larger than, or something larger than a cloud giant, for example. Um, so I have a I have a guinea pig model that we could be doing, we could be working with. 
Um, and we'll probably use some airbrush on that and uh, maybe run it as an, a, like a bonus to the show. Yeah, bonus I like 20 that minutes idea. After, after we finish here. Um, so that way we're not eating into our regular painting time. So we'll have to see how that goes. If, any, if people are interested, let us know in the chat. Let Johnny know, really. <laughs> it's all up to Johnny. But we can do that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, I got one wing done. One wing done? That on looks, that side. That looks great. I'm, yeah. I was distracted while I was talking there. Because <laughs> I was watching you on the screen. One done. There we go. Oh, no, I'm close, fam. Uh, uh, oh, here. <laughs> I've stolen it. Because I want to get it really close oh. to the camera. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Uh huh. Bird. How cool is that? Yeah. Yep. That's looking See, awesome. That kind of wipes out some of the different coloration going on between the cream and the whatnot up there. But oh, having it this close to the camera. Uh, this, <laughs> close. this close. But uh, no, I think it looks great. Huh? I think it's. Uh, I think you've hit Feathers. it. Feathers. Yeah, it's it's regular enough. Mm -hmm. But it's not too because it's a natural exact. bird exactly. in the wilderness. Exactly, it is natural bird. <laughs> Good work. That looks cool. You know, I like it. You know how birds are natural <laughs> and in the wilderness. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but no, I think it looks awesome. <gasps> Second round of minis already. Okay. Yes. Let's check them out. What do we got? <gasps> Shop and take a breath. The Glacier King. So this is from the uh, Trollbloods, uh, Trollbloods range from Hordes. From that Privateer is Press. so many delightful shades of blue. It is, isn't it? So many of them. I love those crystals on the back. Yes. They're, um, yeah. I don't remember seeing nice. him in Frozen. Really? That's the only place I've seen him. He's the guy who, like, no, he was called Marshmallow. That was Marshmallow. Oh, Marshmallow, my, my mistake. He, he had a name. Okay, he wasn't the Glacier King? Should <laughs> no. totally have been the Glacier King. <laughs> totally should have been the Glacier King. Is that Frozen 2? Spoilers, that's Frozen, Frozen 2. Frozen okay. 2. Okay. Okay, there we go. Now we've identified it. But no, it looks fantastic, Brian. Nice work. Ooh. That oh. is so ethereal looking. It's amazing, isn't it? I feel like if it was in real life, the top plume of that mushroom crown, I guess, yeah. uh, would just almost be billowing. Yeah, you can you can imagine, you can see it flowing. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. You weren't even looking. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I missed your only shot at Whimsy. Yeah. Oh. Bad luck. You'll have to see the. <laughs> You'll have to see the rerun. But uh, no, I agree with you. It definitely uh, has that flowing look. I think, uh, yep. Fantastic, uh, fantastic mushroom feel there, Joel. Of course, I need to ask how it did in the contest, but. It didn't win. Didn't win? Oh, and that's all that counts? <laughs> that's all that matters to you, Leona? Whether it won or not? Well, he said he had a good time. Okay, there we go. He had a good time, too. That's the important part. Cool. Uh, Sean, a wear at on the loose. Ooh. I think that thing needs to be shackled up. <laughs> he was. He was? It was broken he free. escaped. Wow. Oh. Jeez, there's a whole story there and you're missing it, Dave. I am. The camera's oh. in the way. I can't see the other one. But no, it looks great, Sean. <laughs> very nice. I think. Um, I like the tail. The tail is yep. very good. The tail is cool. I love the, uh, I love the eyes. Yeah. Like, they, they really pop out. I feel like it'd be very easy to lose them if they weren't. Painted like that. Like oh, lose them okay, in the I see. I see what you mean. <laughs> they, they would, they would be hidden away if you yeah, done not, them as like beady black. Actual or, eyes popping out. I think they're gonna go like squeeze the head and they go. <laughs> where they go? Rolling across the floor. Um, now that would be a cane for yeah. minis, yeah. But uh, no, good, nice work there, Sean. Looks great. Very cool. Brian, Reapers, Mr. Bones. That's a very cool model. Is that a, so I'm guessing that, that it's dragging, is it dragging your bag of bones? I think along? so, yeah. It looks cool. 
And I love that it has the raised lantern, <laughs> despite not having any eyes. But he has to see where he's going. Oh. Well, we say they've popped out and they've rolled ahead. <laughs> Don't give the mini companies any idea. You're going to be the one putting those eyes into the minis as you back put them in. together. Yeah. Back in. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what the whole beholder is about, right? Just sticking on those tentacles. But uh, no, Brian, this looks uh, it looks very cool. I think the um, also the, the the way the background that you put the yeah. Remember? I'm not sure if you've uh, have you clipped it out and then superimposed it over there. I'm not sure. So, but I think it, uh, yeah, it works very, very well. Looks great. Nice work, Brian. Oh, David has uh, some Sec Four from MegaCon Games. Ooh. These look neat. Those do look neat. I'm liking the uh, kind of the the green and orange, almost tiger stripe. Yeah. Kind of uh, yeah. look on the. the I camouflage. like how the green is vibrant without being lime. Right. Yeah. That's uh, definitely cool, and uh, also the that um, what's the word I'm looking for? The urban basing. Yeah. That's looking great. Very nice work, David. Cool. I like it. Jody has uh, his Cretan. He's a ranger that can ride his wolf familiar. Oh my Ooh. goodness. That thing is <laughs> tiny. Tiny. It's so wee. Yep. I like that's that great. the wolf is charging into battle, though. And it's yeah. just on the back. Just That's adorable. It's ready to pounce. That it, is, would, it is kind of adorable, that's, isn't it? it? It's very cute. <laughs> I mean, it's vicious, but it's also very cute. You, you'd be going, like going, ah, oh, right until you're sort of torn apart by it? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, looking good. I think uh, it looks great. And I love the dry brushing on the, uh, on the wolf. Looks neat. Mike. Reaper's Dwarf, Master of the Hunt. Is he going to throw that pick? It looks like he's going to throw that pick. And he's I pointing so. to someone, too. He's like, you! you! Yeah! <laughs> he's getting the gauge. Yes. wonder if he needs glasses. He's got that angle. Yeah, yeah, that angle. That is, that's is—that's a very, yeah. He's reading the menu from back here. But yeah, that no, looks great, Mike. Nice job. I think the uh, the browns and the greens give that hunting feel. Yes. Ooh, I love all the flowers. No, that was it. Green and the brown. Yep, green and the brown. <laughs> Sorry, Leona. I didn't want to mess with you. I love this. I love this because he looks so grumpy, and you all the bits of his face are like picked out so well to see that expression, and all yep. his muscles are bulging, and then he's just in a field of flowers. A field of flowers. So cute. Is he going to bend over and pick one up? Or do you think he's got hay fever? <laughs> maybe that's why he looks grumpy. Yeah, that's why he's frowning, yeah. Oh, I hate spring. But uh, it, looks, uh, it looks great. Yep. Orion. I saw this on the, on the group, I think, yesterday? Yeah. Did you go on yesterday? Yeah. But yeah, fantastic. Um, great work on the contrast there. Which yeah. is the, and there's the overall um, kind of look. I think I've, I've I haven't talked about it for a while, but the uh, concept of spheres mm -hmm. when you're painting. So if every, if, think of everything as a, a group of spheres. Okay. So the whole, picture the whole model as a sphere and where you have the dark sections down the bottom and the brighter sections at the top. Yeah. So it, it covers that. So if you look on, particularly the photo from the back, um, so the, the legs down there have that going on. The highest, like the highest highlight on that right leg, mm -hmm. is darker huh. than the highest highlight at the top. That's really cool. But then the shoulders are spheres as well. The those elbows very definitely are spheres. Um, but you have that progression. Yeah. So it's a whole bunch of spheres that have been put together to create that larger sphere. But uh, so yeah, I think um, the the miniature definitely lends itself to that. But I think. Uh, Orion has, um, Orion has uh, really hit that very well. Nice job. Hmm. No. Oh, Chris. That's adorable. Is this the, uh, the panda? Yeah. Excellent. So I think, yeah, from the board game uh, Wanda. <laughs> so this is my friends um, Jonathan like and Heath and uh, Elizabeth have done this uh, board game. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's only a super cool uh, board game uh, released last year, 2019. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, sort of a, a whole bunch of sort of anthropomorphic animals uh, adventuring through a um, kind of a Cthulhu-esque tainted town. I say there's definitely some tentacles underneath tentacles that room. Yep. I, I don't think pandas have tentacles. No, that's the but. That's their um, kind of their company logo, their mm. panda cult games. That's adorable. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. But yeah, nice nice work on that, Chris. Uh, definitely got a great great job there. Oh, Dwight, the chosen accents from uh, Warhammer Underworlds. These look cool. Very nice job. I think um, those big bright orange plumes are um, look very cool. You got a nice uh, sort of shading progression on those, looking good. And all of those muscles, <laughs> so many muscles. Are you a fan of the muscles? Um, these guys have just have loads and loads and loads of muscles. <laughs> so it's kind of too muscly. I don't know. Are they? Yeah. Maybe. But uh, but again, uh, the choice of the blue on the um, on those little wine cloths is uh, great as well. Matches as well with the red, uh, the orange. Oh, my buddy Brian Delaney. A spectacular Ooh. job. Brian's a Brian's a wonderful Gandalf. painter who doesn't paint anywhere near enough. <laughs> he needs to paint a lot. Wow, more. you're you're calling someone out there. Yep, Brian, you need to paint more. Brian knows that I would say that. <laughs> Without a doubt. But uh, yeah, he's done a beautiful job on this. It's just smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Where's that hashtag butter? Yeah. <laughs> hashtag butter. 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 Uh, but yeah, beautiful work, Brian. Um, yeah, just uh, just great. I think, well, he, he would have started from white undercoat with that and uh, shaded the, um, basically shaded in the gray for the, um, for shadow facts. Uh, yeah, yep. And just, uh, then just built that sort of through to black. It's, I mean, it's just shaded, it's so, so smooth. Beautiful, beautiful work, Brian. Yep. Wonderful. More minis, please. Oh, the Crafting Muse. Ooh, Baby, Baby Yoda. Yoda. Spoilers. <laughs> no, no, not spoilers. But yeah, I wonder how big this is. How big is this? Uh -huh. Vanessa? Yeah, you tell us how big it is. Yeah. It looks it cool. It looks tiny. It looks tiny. Yeah. But uh, this one, it's been 3D printed. Because yeah. you can see it on the, I think you can see some of the striations on there. I'm guessing it was a, I never remember the, the names. But anyway, the, one of the extrusion, plastic extrusion printers. But, uh, yep, yeah, a little bit of coloration on it. It's kind of a little bit of pinkish to the cheeks. Very cute. Yep. Yeah. Like a little nice bit of concentration on its face. Oh, and Jeff. The Uni of Souls complete. So Jeff's been painting these up from the Rising Sun box oh, by uh, Come so On. Oh, that's so gross. In it the best is, way, in the nicest way. It is super gross. And you have painted that exceptionally well. Yeah. Wonderfully gross. Wonderfully gross. Wonderfully gross. <laughs> Delightfully gross. Uh, nice work, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. That's what makes it gross. I mean, the... <laughs> The like played the, like dead the people, dead people that are hanging back there, yeah. Right. Yeah. That looks great. Very nice. Oh, Clive is working on. His, yeah. Oh, look the, at the bugging eyes on that. Giant, yeah. yeah. The way the the skin looks bruised with the way he shaded it on the back. Yeah. Kind of um, almost like it's going through a transformation yeah. kind of process. It's got a, a bit of the feel of. Um, like uh, Mr. Hyde from yes. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Yes. That kind of, yeah. Looking great there, Clive. I think, um, yeah, with so much of that sort of knotty muscle, Just. strange organics. Looking good, very cool. And that buggy eye. That eye about to pop out. <laughs> Last one? Last one, oh. Ooh. Okay, that looks and Dave. Cool. That looks oh. inky. That looks very cool. Merkilor. 
trying an aged armor. That does have a very uh, sort of tainted look to it. Mm. It's looking very cool. And I like the um, the glow from inside. Yeah. It's looking great there, Dave. Um, where is this model from? Uh, I want to know. It has a bit of a um, uh, ring wraith kind of look to it. It does have a little bit of a ring wraith. That, that it's glowy, like, robed, flowy vibe. Floating, robed, glowy vibe. But uh, I know that recently Games Workshop released some more of the ring wraiths. But I was just wondering if this was uh, one of them. You have to let us know, Dave. Are you still in the <laughs> chat? Please, let us know. That's it for now. Oh. <gasps> oh. That means everyone needs to paint more. Right. Oh, David um, Moffat in the chat has suggested that the uh, the dwarf that I thought was about to throw a pickaxe uh -huh. or a little pick was, uh, that was actually a crossbow. So, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> We're blind. Well, we, um, we, we only got to see the, like, this side of the, like, the underside of the crossbow. Yeah. You wear your glasses. You have no excuse. What? In the chat, he never said. Aw. Uh, Dave says Reaper. Oh, Reaper? It's a resin mini they just put out. Okay, cool. I have to go looking for that. That's a very nice model. Very well painted. Looks, uh, looks great, Dave. Nice. So, much time. Oh, there we go. 15 minutes. Oh, I, I'm still trucking. I'm finish these two I'll, I'll get those wings done, the tail done. I'll put some little, some eye work there and do a little bit more for the wings and on the other side. Cool. Yeah. I'm just wondering if I'm going to get these finished now. Haha, -ha, I might beat you. Possibly. Let's see. You can do it. You can do it. Do you believe in me? There we go. I believe you. I have faith. First, I thought he was going to answer that, and I was like, oh. <laughs> okay. I had to think about it. <laughs> You're not sure if you believe in me. <laughs> Battle Cat from He-Man? Ah. That's cool. <laughs> There's a He-Man thing happening at the moment that's, isn't there, or on its way soon? Is there a movie coming out? Um, is there a new series? I think the people who did She-Ra were going to do a He-Man, okay. right? Yeah. That's like, they're technically siblings, aren't they? Check it out for us. Oh. Let's see. The only problem with being away for two weeks is that all of my paints require shaking. <laughs> all of them. Oh, apparently it's Masters of the Universe uh, movie. Oh. Okay. Okay. 2021? Yeah. No, we've got so long to wait. One whole year. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I'm not sure if I mentioned if I mentioned it on the show at all, but um, one of the things that really got me started in kind of making stuff for miniatures mm -hmm. um, was when I was a kid watching um, the He-Man cartoon. Yeah. On Saturday mornings, and I had my like my Star Wars, Star Wars figures there, and I would take um, like toothpicks and aluminum foil. Would you make them little swords? I would, I would make them little swords or axes or crazy uh, things that were the, that were similar to the, the ones I'd seen on He-Man. Aw. You're so cute, Dave. What happened? Yes, there we go. You gave it all to them? Yep, passed it on to them. <laughs> I think they, they stole it from me. You know, That's I believe that, though, because my dad <laughs> had hair. 
And when he had my sister, he started losing hair. And when they had me, his yep. hair went gray. Right. Yep. Um, if I did that, um, like, 20, 2009, 2019 kind of challenge, oh, yeah. the photos, um, yes. You would see that in 2009, before my daughter was, first daughter was born, I didn't have gray hair. But now, Years it's later. a thing. And that's not the reason I'm wearing a hat today. Just so you know. <laughs> I've told you about my terrible hat hair. Yeah. So, and it was cold this morning, so I had a like, knitted cap on. And then when I took it off, it was hair. <sighs> okay. Yeah, that's looking good. What color these eyes need to be black? Put these tail feathers black in. Like beady eyes for Griffin. Some beady eyes? Beady, beady black eyes. All right. Hey, do you think it should? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Trying to get these tail feathers painted. Yeah. Man. What are your plans for this weekend? This weekend? Yeah. Get these miniatures finished. No, um, that's for today. <laughs> Sorry. That's the next few minutes. Uh, I'm going to go and see uh, Rise of Skywalker. And we're going to see how many of my family can fall asleep in the, um, in the theater. <laughs> Because of jet lag. Uh, I thing. have a reenacting group thing uh, that my friend does, and I was invited to go hang out and eat food with them. Oh, cool. Um, and so, yeah, I don't even have to dress up. I, I'm just going to go eat food. You have to go and eat food. <laughs> I want to go and eat food. Um, that sounds fantastic. Maybe see Rise of Skywalker. Uh, I don't know. It depends. Well, if you do, we can talk about it next week. <laughs> yeah, you got to. I'll go, I'll tell the boyfriend whenever I get back. I'll be like, hey, um, so for work. <laughs> for work, I have to go and see. <laughs> work says you have to bring me out on a movie date to see Rise of Skywalker. So. <laughs> it's compulsory. Yep. Popcorn and Honestly, I was going to be like, we go out to dinner and make it a. All right, the whole thing, the whole shebang. I mean, well, I expect we'll go and see it at the Senator Theater here in Baltimore, and go to Clark Burger, which is really good. Ooh. Neither have I. Clark Burger. What's good there? Pun. What's good there? What's good there? The poutine. Ooh. They do poutine. They're Canadian. Poutine is good. Um, and the, just the, the sort of basic Clark Burger is, is also good. But they have, um, they have one called Wake and Bacon, a burger, that is, which has uh, bacon and egg on it. Oh, that sounds so good. Yeah. And it doesn't just have to be for breakfast. Are you a strict breakfast food person can only be for breakfast? Oh, or? no, no. No, breakfast can be any time. We can still be friends then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry to anyone I might have offended in chat, but uh, <laughs> breakfast food is an all-time food. Yep. I'm a big fan of places that do breakfast any time. But uh, yeah, that's, so that's what I'll be doing this weekend. As well as maybe catching up on The Mandalorian. And watching more Witcher. And watching more Witcher. Yep. You have a, a lot of things. I do. I do. But such is my lot in life. I'm always behind. With great, with great power. Yep. OK. 
together. Are you the type of person who can paint while they're watching TV? Uh, I can, but usually if I'm watching something for the first time, I like to to watch it um, rather than paint and listen to it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when I'm painting, I can have the TV on, but it's much better if it's something I've seen before. I, I can't pay attention if yeah. I'm... If you're painting? Yeah. I'm like, nope. Yeah. Like, I like to have background noise on, but... Sure. I wouldn't be able to actually, like, know what was going on okay. at any point in time. <laughs> right. Ooh. David, I'd eat breakfast right now if I could. So would I. In fact, I think I'm going to go home and be like, you know what we need? Breakfast for dinner. Breakfast for dinner. Uh, we have sword fighting tonight. Yeah. So, obviously, so, we need to breakfast up before we go. For sure. Like, eggs, right? Loads and loads of eggs. <laughs> yes. Just all of the eggs. Just all of the eggs. Yeah, that's what, I was saying. that's what the giggle was, Leona. I'm glad you're on the same page. Was it? Hmm. I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Please. I'm so glad. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> you need the painting Happy Little Minis version. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't the painting Happy Little Minis version. No one. Disappointed. Paints. I don't no know. One paints Can... like Gaston. <laughs> no one paints like Gaston. No one. I, I can't think of faints like. Faints Gaston. like Gaston. Okay, we can come up with something. Okay, we'll have to, we'll get better at that. That's a work in progress. I'm not saying we have to sing it on the show, but perhaps we could <laughs> just put it in the group. Okay, but we are coming towards the end of the show, so I, I'm going to mention these cloud giants. Once again. One more time. One more time. The Wiz Kids, uh, Knowles' Marvelous Miniatures, cloud giants that we've got sitting in front of us here. Uh, they are up for grabs. Pop hashtag cloud giant in the chat. And uh, any of the chats, doesn't matter where you are. Be you on Facebook, Twitch, or the YouTubes. You can uh, have a chance to win one of these awesome cloud giants. Love the... Uh, I just have that, just love the pose. Just has that kind of. Obviously, there's a wispy, ethereal kind of feel, but the um, the in the hand. I'm going to put this under the close cam for a sec. So the hand that's outstretched here looks like it's forming uh, hailstones. Ah. Oh. Okay. Which looks really cool. Big fan. I like it. So you can win those. Hashtag Cloud Giant. How's it looking? Are you winning? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Apologies, we're always get a little bit quiet when we're in the when we're in the final <laughs> in the final countdown. Final, final countdown. Bit. Final countdown. Da -da 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 -da. Man, that song is old. <laughs> Everybody loves that oh, song. Oh, Byron, sc scrambled eggs and ketchup, really? No. I'll totally do that. Wrong. No. Mm. You and Byron can go have breakfast. Waffles. Waffles? Yes. Waffles are the best. So you're saying waffles are better than pancakes? Yes. Ooh. Mm. Chocolate chip pancakes? Chocolate chip pancakes are really good. Like chocolate chip waffle versus chocolate chip pancake. Mm. Difficult. See, for the longest time, and by the longest time, I mean like 30 plus years, 
I thought that um, pancakes were better than waffles. So obviously it took a while, but uh, I you came around. I came around. Yeah. I love pancakes because I think that you can do so much with them. Sure. Yeah, we. You, why oh, would you make us choose? Uh, you, you can love both. I'm not asking you to like never have the other one again. But I'm just asking you to realize that one is better than the other. Yeah, it is. Waffles. Waffles. Yep. Yep. Waffles. I mean, all without right. a doubt. David said anything sauce. <laughs> mm. mm, poached eggs. So there we go. There's the the Griffin done up. And originally, I was thinking that I could go along and put a little bit of detail down on the wings here, like add a little bit of uh, like brown to the feathers. But uh, as somebody else has done that to theirs, can't steal my ideas. I don't want to look like I was copying. Jeez. Also, it wouldn't it wouldn't have looked as good. But there's. Uh, the griffin. Cacao, cacao. I'm, I'm not going to do the screech. Leona, can you just make any animal noise I need on command for the rest of my life? Yep. Just give her. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> hey, Leona. Wolf. <laughs> Fantastic. That's dedication. There we go. Pardon? You can see the fade? Yep. Yeah, it's in there. But I think, uh, yeah, like bracketing it with a little bit of um, some little chevrons on the wings there would be good. On, the, on the, those longer feathers. But can't do that anymore. <laughs> that option has been taken from me. I, I, got th I got this. I got this. You've been doing it. Yeah. I am almost, almost there. Okay. Cool. Oh. There we go. I was going to say, it's because we haven't changed the battery since uh, 2017. <laughs> oh, that was good. Oh, pretty well. Uh, something people might have seen uh, that I was struggling with a little bit there. I was putting, trying to put the gore grunt of fur, contrast gore grunt of fur, straight over the um, the base on the Grim Reaper. It wasn't quite sticking as well as it should have, uh, so I just mixed in a little bit of um, Idrian flesh from Privateer Press to um, give it a little bit of um, vol uh, body, I guess, which helps. But, uh, yeah, so there we go. Almost, Got almost it. there. I'm just getting the beak, I'm just getting the beak. Almost there, hang on. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Almost there. Uh, he just, just needs the beak. Trying to finish this base as well. We can do it. Are you, are you gonna, oh, you grabbed the base. Oh, okay. Grab the base. All about, all about Teamwork. that base today? Teamwork. What was the Grim Reaper? What would you tell me? Hello. Uh, it was it, it was the salmon moose. I think that's my favorite Grim Reaper scene ever. From Monty Python and the Meaning of Life, or the Meaning of Life. You're all dead. So shut up. Right. You Americans with you, let me tell you something, and I just want to say this. Such a great, great scene. If anybody hasn't seen it yet, go and check it out. I say spoilers. Hmm? Spoilers. Spoilers. It's, yeah. It was released in 1979, so. Yeah. <laughs> I figure, if you haven't seen it yet. All right, all right. I think he's, I think he's done. Okay. Almost done. See, I wanted. <laughs>
See, it's not my fault this time. <laughs> it's all on me. Just love the way that here I am helping you out, and you throw me under the bus. <sighs> Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. Yep. <laughs> there we go. All right. You can knock you can knock one of them off if you want. No, no, there we go. There we go. Let's take that one off. Yeah, how Damn. cool is that? All right. The ground Time. of the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you came out good. Yep. Tone down the gold a little bit so you only really see it whenever it shines. Yep. Yeah. Very nice. Bam. Death and Eagle, ready to go. <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> Someone should write a song about that. <laughs> but no, right. fantastic work. All right, well, so there we are. Yeah, we're that's at the end of another two. episode. We are the, the first, first, <laughs> first of 2020. <laughs> Great minds think alike. Indeed. Exactly. Fools never differ. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was my. Whenever I said. Great mind. When I was growing up, whenever I said great minds think alike, my mom would always counter with fools never differ. Yeah. It's like, thanks, mom. All right. I mean, okay. <laughs> uh, make sure last chance, hashtag cloud giant, because Leona's is going to go and pull those winners. What right time are you going to ask? What time are you going to pull those winners, Leona? <laughs> After, After the, the show. show. So also make sure you're on our Facebook page with Painting Happy Little Minis. Yep. Yeah. Um, Subscribe to us on YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. Uh, and all the other things. All the buttons, all the yeah. things. All the things, Click exactly. <laughs> and that's it. Yep. Yeah. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And uh, we'll see you at your friendly local game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.